The Indian car market has evolved massively in the past few years, from the time of limited options to having a multitude of segments across price ranges. The Indian automobile industry has come a long way. Every now and then, there has been a car which has caused a game-changing effect. Today, we discuss about five such vehicles. But before I start, take your thumb and click the like button, and smoothly glide over the subscribe button. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram to never ever miss any of my crazy updates. Number five, small car meant Maruti Suzuki till Hyundai launched the Santro in 1998, which brought the concept of tall boy hatchback to India. The Santro was also loaded with a ton of features, which was unseen in small cars like a power steering and power windows. Driving the motor, wheel spinning into second gear. It also established Hyundai in India, which has gone to become the second largest car maker in the country. And a force to reckon with. Driving the motor and off we go. Wheel spin, quite a lot of it, and running into red line. 40 kilometers per hour in first gear. Now into second gear. Goes all the way to almost 75 kilometers per hour. Fun fact: Hyundai Santro versus Maruti Wagoner has seen two wars. The first one in the 2000s, which was won by the Santro, and the second one in the recent past, which is being won by the Wagoner. This is, of course, in terms of sales. And off we go. Wheel spinning. Red lines at six and a half thousand RPM, and there are a lot of flat spots in the power band. That's why it bogs down from first to second. And now we are into number four. Small cars meant petrol, but Tata changed that with the launch of the Indica in 1999, which brought diesel to a hatchback. The cost of running the Indica was so low that people were ready to live with the gremlins of the car. Just imagine, 20 kilometers per liter, and the cost of diesel fuel when the Indica was launched was under rupees 30. Unbelievably low running costs, along with good space and a great ride. No wonder Tata's very first car established them to offer more car per car. Let's see. Indica, which has made Tata Motors what it is today. Fun fact: Tata Motors sold the Indica in the UK via MG, calling it the MG Rover. Today, MG rivals Tata in India with its Hector competing with the Harrier. Friends became foes, huh? Pulling the motor, uh, there isn't much amount of pull. The power delivery is linear. It's kind of flat, and it gets noisy ever as I give it the beans. Let me quickly take number three. If you wanted to travel with your complete family, the options were very limited. You could get something practical but devoid of comfort from Indian brands, or pay a lot more for foreign brands. There was nothing in between till the Innova came along in 2005. See a good view of what's around. I don't think so. Into third gear through this corner. Okay, I think I'm gonna roll any moment. No, you will not. Do not worry. Hit this chicken over there. Come on, this chicken. No, 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 no. Come on, come on, come on, Innova. Let me hit any chicken. Okay, just walk through this one, and there we hit the chicken. Wow, that's a win for me for sure. It was stout. it to be too big but no one cared about that and lapped up the mpv in huge numbers the innova changed the mpv segment completely it was no longer a taboo to be seen driving one due to terrific reliability and quality on offer so much so that people started using this vehicle even when driving alone Fun fact: Toyota ran a massive campaign demonstrating how versatile the Innova is with Amir Khan in it. They don't make such brilliant ads anymore. Left foot on the brake, right foot on the accelerator, revving the motor, and off we go. Yeah, ignore the water splashing part, but let me tell you straight away that the beauty of the Innova Crysta is the fact that it no longer feels sluggish. I mean, performance is really very peppy. Number two, small cars and hatchbacks meant the same thing till the Swift was launched in 2005. It was the first hatchback to be loaded with a ton of features, which was unheard of in even C-segment sedans that time. The Swift. Offered fun handling and started the premium hatchback trend. I know the Fiat Palio came before, but it never really took off. The Swift did, and in 2007, Maruti brought in the Fiat sourced engine. I was so impressed with the diesel that we booked one right away. Now there was a problem with the diesel, which went on to becoming the national diesel engine of India, powering a range of cars and the complete Maruti diesel stable for more than 12 years. Fun fact: the Swift was the changing point for Maruti Suzuki, from its old cars like the Zen and S Team. To newer ones like the Desire and SX4, almost 2.5 million units of the Swift have been sold till date. Revs all the way till 5,000 RPM. That is loud. In fact, you know what is even more 
Amazing. Number one. While there were plenty of sedans available in India in 1997, like the Hindustan Ambassador Premier, Padmini, Maruti, ST, Opel, Astra, Ford, Escort, and Devo CLO, it was in 1998 when a sedan was launched that rewrote the rules of the sedan segment. The Honda City, marking the Japanese car makers' entry into the country, the first gen city was actually based on a Civic. And when it got its facelift in 2000, it got the VTEC engine, which offered an additional 6 bhp of power and made enthusiasts go crazy with the performance of its high revving motor that would redline at 7,100 rpm. Revving the motor revs all the way to 7,500 in Newton and off we go. My goodness, the kind of torque still on offer. My lord, that's absolutely insane. Insane, and the speedometer goes all the way to 60 kilometers per hour right away. Fun fact: While today the city's closest rival is the Hyundai Verna, in 1998 another sedan was launched, the Mitsubishi Lancer, which competed closely with the city. And both of them were sporty sedans and a boy racer's favorite. Right for the accelerator, and off we go. Look at the wheel spin on offer. Insane, and look at the motor. My goodness, that's why Honda is Honda. The motor really revs like crazy and pulls very strongly as well. I know I haven't mentioned popular cars like the Maruti. 800 Zen, Omni, etc. Because I already covered them in my nine most iconic cars in India video, so you can just click on the bottom left to see that. Do let me know which cars you think have been game-changing for us in India. Bye.